Hey Church family, happy Wednesday. It is good to be with you today, minus the fireplace. It's nice outside. We have the Shekinah glory, it looks like, kind of shining in from one of the windows over here, so we don't need the fireplace. But today, seriously, we're going to actually spend some time looking at the theme of newness. What does it mean to be made new in Christ? And when we're made new, uh, what exactly does that mean? And how does that work? What, what's the process look like of, of being made new? In order to orient us to that idea, I want to just remind you of one of my favorite stories. Uh, it's actually the story of Les Mis. Uh, Victor Hugo's really big book, or the great musicals, or there are even some good uh, film adaptations of the story uh, that are out there as well. But there's, there's one scene early on in Les Mis where Valjean, the main character, is leaving prison and he's looking for a place to stay for the night. And he happens across uh, the home of a bishop. And as he gets there, the bishop offers him some dinner and a warm bed to sleep in. And Valjean has this moment where he says, oh, you know, a warm dinner and a warm bed in the, in the morning, I shall be a new man. And if you know the story, you know what happens that night is darkness still kind of creeps in on Valjean and he ends up stealing some things and, and leaving. And we'll tell a little bit more of the story in just a second. But the Bible talks all over the place about the idea of newness. You, you probably don't even have to know scripture verse references, but you could probably make a quick list of some of those places. Think about Paul, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, right? If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. The old is gone, it's done away with, and the new has come. Or maybe you think about the, the passage in John chapter 3 where Jesus is talking with Nicodemus. And they're having that conversation. And Jesus talks about this idea of being born again, not only being born of water, but being born of the Spirit. So Jesus, again, is talking about newness, new life. Or in the Old and in the New Testament, a lot of people get renamed, right? God gives them a new name. And they're living out of this new reality, this new identity, because of their relationship with God. Maybe you think about places in Colossians where Paul talks about putting off the old person and putting on the new person. All over the place, there's, there's story after story, passage after, after passage that explores this theme of newness. But when it comes to this idea of how we are made new and what is being made new, that's really what we want to talk about today. So are you made new the way that lightning strikes? I mean, is that just something that God does and, and it's one of those let go and let God kind of things? Or is it something that is kind of the way that, that people think about self-actualization or self-realization or self-betterment today. Is it all up to you to pull yourself up by your proverbial bootstraps? Well, again, the Bible actually speaks to some of these things. So let's take this in just sections. First of all, what is made new? If you have a piece of paper, this is something that I came across a while back and it's been really helpful for me to think through. If you have a piece of paper and a pen, I want you to draw five concentric circles on a piece of paper. If you don't have one, go get one. Um, push pause, go grab a piece of paper, come back, and just write this out and, and think about this. In the very center circle, I want you to write the word heart, or you can draw a picture of it. In the next circle that's outward from that, I want you to write the word mind. In the next word out from that, I want you to write the word body. In the fourth circle, I want you to write the word social or relationships. And then the last circle, I want you to write the word soul. I'm not an artist, but this is what mine would look like. So again, in the very center, you've got the heart, then you've got the mind, then you've got the body, then you've got relationships, and then you've got your soul. And the word soul, by the way, it, it doesn't mean what we oftentimes think it means. Biblically, the word soul just means life. It's the whole of who we are. So every facet of what we just drew is included in our soul. The, the heart is oftentimes what we would think of as that immaterial, spiritual, the, the, the center of the will, so to speak. That's what we would oftentimes think of as that, an Im, that immaterial aspect of who we are. But it's like the CEO's office. It's why it's called the heart, right? Um, but even the heart is said to be made new biblically. And we're going to talk about that in just a second as well. But then Paul in Romans chapter 12, he says that we're renewed through our minds. How does that work? Well, what's up with that? Our bodies are going to be made new. God is committed to raising us from the dead. And God wants to renew all of our relationships, right? 
just by the way, as a quick side note, hopefully you have seen an aspect of each one of those things before when we went through our sermon series on disciples, the five characteristics of disciples, right? Um, I won't bore you with all those details again, but this is where a lot of that comes from. We're being made new completely. God wants to renew every aspect of us, but again, how does it work? Well, in Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27, the scripture says that God is committed to taking out of us our heart of stone and putting into us a heart of flesh, a heart that begins to feel the things that God feels. So in other words, when we are made new, the theological word is regenerated, when God sovereignly works on our hearts, this is something that we don't necessarily have control over. When God regenerates us by his powerful Holy Spirit, we have a new set of desires that begin to, to be conjured up within us. We start wanting and loving the things that God wants and loves. Doesn't mean that we do it perfectly, but we have a new set of desires that are beginning to work upon us. But then, like I said, Paul also talks about this idea of our minds being renewed. We're gonna look in a second at another passage where Paul talks about what we're supposed to do with our bodies. And again, of course, when our hearts are renewed, when our minds are renewed, we're going to start living differently in our relationships, right? We don't have time to unpack all of the facets of that, but the bottom line is God is about renewing every bit of who we are. But how does this work? Well, again, God is the one who works on our hearts. He does that according to his Holy Spirit. The Bible calls that regeneration, or like Jesus talked about, being born again. The, 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 the work of God's Spirit through our hearts or on our hearts, he sovereignly just orchestrates this new set of desires that he sets up within us. But then what happens is when you start reading the scriptures and you come across a place like Romans 12, where Paul talks about being renewed by our minds, what you see there is while God is doing the internal work, we need to actually put ourselves in positions where we're exposed more and more to God's ways so that we start thinking thoughts the way that God would think. We start understanding or interpreting life the way that God would interpret it. So again, when we're being renewed through our minds, um, all of life begins to change too. We're doing different things with our bodies. We're doing different things in our relationships because we're thinking differently and because our spirits, our hearts, our wills have been renewed because of what God has done. And so we are working in that sense alongside of God, but it's ultimately God who prevails upon our hearts. But now, let's go back to Valjean for a second. In that scene where Valjean leaves in the night and he steals some of the silverware from uh, the bishop, um, and he's returned the next day, we all know what that's like. We all don't always live out of our newness, even though we said that we would. And remember in that scene as he's brought back by the prison guards and he's, he's brought back before the bishop, the bishop, he, he actually is incredibly gracious. And he says, Valjean, you forgot to take the candlesticks. And he has this moment where he tells the guards to leave and that yes, it was just all a gift, but he has this moment with Valjean where he says, Valjean, my brother, with this silver I have bought you and you have promised to be new. So go about it. And it reminds me of this passage in, in 1 Peter, verses uh, 18 and 19 of chapter one. Peter says, you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like a lamb without blemish or spot. Peter goes on and he starts talking about how we ought to live in light of that ransom. Just like the situation with Valjean. And we could camp in 1 Peter, but I also, again, just want to reorient us to something that Paul says in Romans chapter 6, because I think Paul puts this in a very succinct way in the first 14 verses. I won't read it all for you, but I'm just going to sum it up in two things. In the first 11 verses, what Paul seems to do in Romans chapter 6, when he talks about this idea of us living out of our new heart, with our minds being renewed, he also talks about what we do with our bodies. But the way that he does this is he, he basically says that part of this new life means that we died. We died with Christ and we've been raised to walk in a newness of life, Paul says in verse four. To sum up the first 11 verses, I put it this way. You're dead, so live like it. 
It's oxymoronic, I know, but the first few verses Paul focuses on the fact that when we place our faith in Christ, we died with him. Our old way of life is done away with. And so now we need to live like new people. We've, we've been raised to walk in this newness of life. But again, what does that mean practically? Paul's speaking theoretically there, though very truly and, and really, it's true. We are dead, and now we're free to live in a new way. And that brings us to the last few verses where Paul talks about what we do with our embodied life. So he says, you're dead, live like it, verses 1 through 11. And then in verses uh, 12 through 14, he says, you're free, so serve like it. Again, also oxymoronic, I know, but he, he talks there about this idea of how we've been set free from sin's bondage to serve a new master. And that, I think, is what really uh, Paul is getting at here and how we're to think about this new life. It's the way that Valjean was encouraged to think about his life by the bishop. You're a new man. This is just, it's constantly true of you. You're new. So live out of your newness. And so again, what does that look like? Well, Paul, again, hints at what this looks like. He says, present the parts of your body to God as instruments of righteousness. What would it look like for us to start thinking about all the facets of our lives, literally, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, to put those at the disposal of the new master that we serve? Paul says here that we're a slave to the one that we actually obey. And so part of this reality that Paul is trying to pull out for us is we've been bought, we've been made new. We serve a new master. And so with all that God has done as he's renewing our hearts, as we're being exposed to the word of God and our minds are being renewed, we present every bit of who we are to God in this newness of life. So is it God's work or is it our work? Yes, the answer is both. But our response to what God has already be begun doing within us and what God has started through the work of his spirit is to surrender the whole of who we are. But God is utterly committed, church, to making us new. One more promise about newness as we close. Philippians 1.6 says that he who began that good work, that new work within us, will bring it to completion on the day of Christ. And God, as he started that work, he's inviting us to surrender over and over and over again. Our minds, every bit of who we are, so that we can live out of our newness. We love you guys. Look forward to seeing you again soon.